Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to be doing an ultimate ATAR video. How did you get a 99.75? It's a question that so many people ask me and today I'm going to be answering almost 50 different questions that I get really, really commonly and I've got them here on my phone. So I will be reading off my phone and I'm just going to get up the questions now. Sorry, I didn't realize the app had undownloaded off my phone. Just getting that up now. But yeah, so um, I'll give you a bit of background. I am a 2023 Queensland graduate. Um, I have gained entrance into medicine and I scored a 99.9, no, 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 a 99.75 ATAR and 3470 in UCAT, which was 99th percentile. I think that's where I almost got mixed up. But I am just going to have a look at my total list of questions and then we can get started. So here we go. The first question is what state am I from? I am from Queensland. I did the QCE. Um, the second question is what subjects did I do? So I did six subjects which were general English, biology, chemistry, physics, maths methods and maths specialist. Um, another question that I get quite commonly is what are the weightings of the external exams? So for most subjects, so like humanities, all that sort of stuff, English, for example, most subjects will have an equal weighting for all assessments. 25% IA1, IA2, IA3, and then a 25% external exam. All subjects except for STEM subjects have a 25% weighted external exam. Now the difference, um, especially, it was very prevalent for me, but if you do a STEM subject, which is either maths or science, you will find that your external exams are weighted at 50%. So for um, your maths methods and maths specialists, and it's the same for general maths as well, the PSMT is worth 20%. Each internal exam is worth 15% and then the external exam is worth 50%. Then for the science subjects like biochem, all of that, the data test is worth 10%, the student experiment and research investigation are worth 20% and then the external exam is worth 50%. So that is sort of the weighting of the subjects I did. So the next question is, how are year 11 and year 12 different in terms of workload? Which did you find more difficult? So to me, subject-wise, year 11 and year 12 were pretty similar, except the only difference is that in year 12, um, for a lot of the year, I was doing UCAT, which was like having a seventh subject. It added on a lot of, like a lot more pressure and a lot more work. And then the other difference is that um, in year 12, it matters. You are trying to get into university, your scores count, all of that. So there's that additional pressure on there. In terms of difficulty, I think um, English in year 12 was easier. Year 12 biology was easier. Year 12 chemistry was more interesting and I liked it a lot more. Year 12 physics, Again, about the same, year 12 methods, I thought year 12 methods was really easy, a lot easier than year 11 methods, and then year 12 specialist was probably the only subject where it was harder in year 12, but the good thing about that was that I was already um, experienced with specialist and how it works and all of that, so it wasn't too bad, and I think, I knew, I could hear my cat in here somewhere, Logan, do you want to come up? Do you want to come up? Come on, come on. Hi, hello, say hello. There, that's my cat Loki. Okay, let me just find where I was up to. About math. Good. Okay, so overall in terms of year 11 in year 12 and the difference, um, year 12 for me was personally a lot more stressful just because of the added stress of ATAR and UCAT. So I do think that I found year 12 more difficult and there was more workload because I did feel the pressure to study more just to make sure I got that mark because honestly a lot of my studying I think was me being paranoid that I wasn't going to be good enough so I probably studied um, a lot more than I had to in a lot of ways but I was so paranoid that I just did it anyway so that was probably the main difference between year 11 and year 12 for me. 
So the next one is how did you take your class notes and what did you use? So I was, um, I did a mix of like paper notes and online notes. So for my maths classes, what my teacher would do is my teacher would print out the PowerPoints for us, which had the notes on it and then the practice questions we did in class. And honestly, I do not find any use in writing notes for maths at all. Um, it's not like there's theory in maths or whatever. For me, maths is all about just practicing. So I actually didn't write notes for maths. I only wrote notes for biology, chemistry and physics because I didn't do it for English either. So it was really just the three science subjects that I wrote notes for. Um, and they, what I would do is I would write my notes in class and I would keep it all neat and all that and do that, right? title it just normally but then I also had a blank copy of the syllabus and then I would fill that in on like my google docs as I went through the class so I would fill in that blank document. Um, the next question is what were your final scores in each subject so I can't remember exactly but I'm pretty sure English was um, 87, chemistry was 100, biology was 99, physics and maths methods were 98 and specialist maths were 97. Did you deal with any self-confidence issues in terms of your schooling? I think I probably am one of the least self-confident people ever and as I said before like a lot of my studying came from paranoia that I wasn't doing well enough and I think one of the biggest like testimonies to my self-confidence issues was I came out of that chemistry external and I was like not feeling great at all. I thought I'd done really badly. And then what made it worse is like everyone was telling me that like I was wrong and all that. And like there was always like this one girl and I mean she was always like really horrible and rude to me, right? Like she just hated me and it's because um you know, we were doing like similar stuff and all that. And I think there was like a bit of competitiveness there. And she would always tell me like in every single exam that I was completely wrong and all that. And that sort of stuff doesn't bother me because I knew that girl didn't like me. She was just trying to make me feel bad, just trying to get in my head, all of that. So people like her, because she did it to me every single time, like I didn't, I didn't have any respect for her. So I never took it seriously. But then when my own friends and, you know, people who I thought were smart and people who did really well started telling me, oh, it seems like you didn't do too great in chem, you know, you had a bad day. And a lot of my friends have just been like, oh, it's okay, it's okay. Like, you know, you just had a bad day and like, it sucks that you funked it, but you just had a bad day. And even though they were like trying to be kind, like I don't think they were trying to be mean, it really did get to me because these were people that I did respect. And I was like, all these people got the same as each other, which was not the same as me. And that really like battered away at my self-confidence. And it even got to when... Um, I'd gone to the staff room with a friend of mine on um, the science staff room and I was talking to my physics teacher and my chem teacher was also there and I was like oh don't be disappointed in my chemistry like I feel like I didn't do that great like not what you would expect of me and then my teachers were like oh pfft, no like I'm sure you were fine and then my friend was like no she actually really did have a bad day like it's going to be bad and like I was like yeah yeah and the teacher's like oh okay and like I know this is turning out to be a long story, but it was more just the fact that everyone was telling me I was wrong. And honestly, that lead up to getting my results was horrible. And I ended up getting a perfect 100 in chemistry, which means although I wouldn't have got everything right, it does mean that all of those people who were telling me I were wrong, they were actually the ones who were wrong. And I know like there's going to be a lot of people out there. If you are a high achiever or you do really well at school, there will be people who don't like you because of that. And often those people are the ones who are trying really hard to do well academically and make it sort of like their whole personality, but they aren't achieving. And it's those people and they're the ones who are going to try and put you down. And it really does take a toll on your self-confidence. But personally, I'm working on that for myself and I really want to like encourage you to try and get past that and try and remember that they aren't always right. Um, I know it's really hard because you don't want to be one of those people who's like, I'm right all the time. But a lot of the time, if you have a history of it, you are often going to be right. And don't go telling that in people's faces or making them feel bad. But it also just means accepting that you aren't doing as bad as everyone else is telling you. You're probably right and it's okay. All of my self-confidence issues came in the time 
it doesn't matter what assessment or what exam where I was waiting between sitting the exam or handing in the assignment and getting the results. That's when all my self-confidence issues came. So yeah, I definitely had self-confidence problems and I am trying so hard this year to not feel that way anymore. Um, seven, if you did any ATAR sub, any other ATAR subject, what would it be and why? I think I would have liked to have done something like economics. I do think it would have been the boost to my ATAR that I needed. And I, out of all, because I already did all the STEM subjects I could, if I had to do another subject and it wasn't STEM, I just think economics would have been interesting and learning a little bit about how the world works in that way. If you could drop any of your subjects, what would it be and why? So mine would definitely be English. Um, it didn't count towards my ATAR. It was never going to. And personally, I didn't enjoy it very much. But in Queensland, for like basically every single university degree, you need to get like a C in an English subject. And it has to be like a general English subject, not like essential. So that's the reason I did English. But if I had the option to not do it, um, I would really, really... Um, like that I would like to have not done English what was your favorite memory in school this is definitely a tricky one but honestly it was probably um all the well-being periods I spent with my well-being group so instead of having like homeroom or PC or tutor or whatever you call it at different schools my school had well-being time and it was all the girls in my grade in my sport house and honestly I really really in a couple of years like we bonded really really well and we had this thing called Monday chats where someone would draw like a random question out of like a jar and it would be something like what's your favorite chocolate and why and like it was and everyone would have to answer and honestly it was just so funny because it would like start up like the, the most random bickering ever like not mean arguing but like a seriously that's what you like trying to convince other people what you like and what's not right and all that and honestly um I just found, found that class really, really, really fun. I had a lot of time with them. So my favourite memory is probably definitely going to be the times I had with my wellbeing group. What is your advice for choosing year 11 and year 12 subjects? So my number one is always going to be do what you love. Like do not waste your time during doing something you don't like. So for me, I had really high expectations and goals for my ATAR. I was like, no, I'm going to work hard. I am going to do it. And I knew that the subjects I chose... It was, I know this is bad to say, that suicide six, um, I knew that that would, um, you know, I know that would, I knew that would get me the high ATAR, but what people don't consider is that biology actually, um, holds so many people back from getting a perfect ATAR, and trust me, all my teachers at my school were, like, doing the calculations, and if it weren't for biology, and if I'd done something like economics or French instead, which I was perfectly capable of doing, like, I work hard. I can do any subject except for like HP. I work hard. If I had done a different subject, I would have got a perfect data. But that's not what I wanted. I didn't want to do economics. I didn't want to do French. I didn't want to do history. Nothing like that. I really wanted to do biology. I personally love bio. You know, it's important for medicine. I just really love biology. And that is why I chose it. And I knew that it would hinder my ATAR. And it did in the end. But at the end of the day... It was something that I really loved. So my advice for choosing your 11 and 12 subjects is to do what you love. And if you're in Queensland, choose six because then you have room to drop one. You don't want to be starting a subject. I know like some people who like transfer subjects like at the end of year 11 and it was really hard for them. So I would always say start off with six subjects and then drop. Don't start off with five and then pick one up. It would just be a little bit tricky. Um... How much work do you need to do in year 11 to do well in year 12? So I think year 11 and year 10 are actually the really, really, really important foundation years. So year 10 is when you need to learn your study skills, your study habits. And really in year 10 and even year 9, if you are a bold one, really learn how to study, how to learn, how to take notes, because that's going to save you so much time in the future. And then when you get to year 11... I would really recommend taking it as a practice one run for year 12. And there are a couple of different reasons why. The first of which is, I know a lot of girls in my grade um, ended up struggling to get their QCE points, not to get their ATAR, but to get their Queensland Certificate of Education because they failed a lot of classes in year 11 because they weren't trying. But a lot of people seem to forget that 
I'm not sure in other states, but in the Queensland syllabus, like in Queensland, you need to pass classes to get points to graduate. And these people were failing and not getting the points they needed because they thought year 11 didn't matter. But year 11 does matter and your classes go towards you getting points. So that's the first reason why you should be trying. And the second reason is you get introduced to every kind of assessment in year 11. So I really, really recommend that you take it and run with it and really, really use it to your advantage. So I recommend while still having fun to really go hard at year 11. I went hard at year 11 and personally I loved it. Year 11 was a really good year for me. I found it very, very fun and because there was no stress of UCAT or stress about the actual marks, like if I didn't get that 20 out of 20 then I was like, okay, it's not that big of a deal. And it was fine because it was just year 11. And even though like I did so much less work in year 11 just because of that less pressure. But I really, really recommend that you take year 11 and use it to your advantage as a practice year. Okay, how to study for exams and how to plan for them. So my biggest thing with studying for exams is to always, especially for STEM subjects, just do practice questions over and over. Rewriting notes is not going to help. Do those practice questions as much as possible. Like, I'm just begging you, practice questions all the way. That's how you study for exams. And for the external exams for science subjects at the end of the year, a lot of the time the questions they ask you are just the syllabus dot points reworded. So say it's something in chemistry about soap, go look at that syllabus dot point about soap and just imagine it as a question. So for the science subjects, practice your long answer questions by literally just writing in response to the syllabus dot points. What I would do is I would print out a blank syllabus and fill it in by hand with my memory and that really helped me. The other thing, and I think I might make a video on this, is understanding the importance of knowing what your cognitive verbs mean. And I had a look like today, literally this morning, at the year 12 chemistry subject report for 2023, so my year. And one of the points um, that you know, they made a point of being like, you need to improve at this, was you need to know what your cognitive verbs mean. For example, the word compare doesn't mean state the differences, it means state the differences and the similarities. And all of the cognitive verbs are in the glossary for each subject and they are the same between subjects. I think I'll make a video on that, but I do think it's really important to understand your cognitive verbs. To plan for your exams, I, um, I will share this one day, but I basically just had like this calendar, but it wasn't really a calendar, it was an Excel spreadsheet with a column per subject and then a column for like my events and all of that. And basically I just used that to, um, you know, write down, it was like a big to-do list and I would bold the things that I had to do first. And honestly, I didn't plan my study. I would just work through the list, pick something to do and then do it and cross it off the list. So for me, my planning for my exams was really just consistently working through things. If we did badly in the internals, how can we save our marks in the externals? Um, personally, I find this to be a very difficult question and a lot of people don't like the answer, but the answer to this is just grind as hard as possible. You just have to really get stuck in there and try to reteach yourself, relearn everything in time for the exams. And something a lot of people don't like hearing is that this is a marathon, not a sprint. If you start your learning, like you start revising studying at the beginning of the year, you will do well in your externals. And I'm assuming that if you did badly in the internals, it's gonna be really, really hard to boost that mark up. The only way you can do it is to just study as much as possible, learn the content, revise, get a good night's sleep, get I urge you to prioritize your sleep the entire year. Be in bed by nine, be in bed by 9.30. My biology teacher used to always say, your brain is like a bucket and it fills up with water, with information. And if you don't go to sleep and empty that bucket, then everything's just gonna leak out of the side and you're not gonna remember anything. In year 10 psychology, we learn about how important sleep is to consolidate all the information you've learned in a day. So I really, really strongly urge you guys to get your sleep, 
and grind as much as possible if you've messed up the internals and want to save yourself in the externals. How did you decide on what subjects you wanted to do? This one was easy for me. I love science. I love STEM subjects. I just love it so much. So that was really easy for me. Um, how much did you actually study during year 11 and year 12? I was doing about 40 minutes of UCAT per day and then a couple of hours each afternoon to study. And then I would basically study all weekend. But then I sort of realized um, in hindsight now that if I had put away my phone in a different room and hadn't kept taking breaks to watch TikTok or breaks to do this or breaks to do that, I probably could have saved a lot of time. So I probably did not need to study as much as I was because a lot of my studying, um, I think I kept getting quite distracted. So I feel like that was one of my problems, but I did do a couple of hours each afternoon. Friday night was always my night off though. What is your advice for math subjects? Don't take notes, always do the practice questions. Um, just do as many questions as possible and in preparation for the external exams, try to really just um, expose yourself to as many question types as possible. I remember the specialist exam, like two weeks before the external, I, because my school used the Jacaranda textbooks, I had a friend give me her Cambridge textbook, which is like the exact same syllabus, just a different company made the textbook. And when I went through it, there was like a question and I'd never seen it before and I learned how to do it because it was so tricky and it was on the external. Obviously not the exact same question, but like the exact same style, the exact same process. Basically the only thing different were the numbers. And the only reason that I had come across that was because I decided to step in and try a different textbook and expose myself to different questions. So honestly, Maths, expose yourself to as many question types as possible. What is your advice for science subjects? So for science subjects, um, practice questions, again, um, use Anki for flashcards. Um, way better than physical ones because you can do them at school on your laptop. You won't lose them, nothing like that. And the spaced repetition is really important. Um, practice exams, practice papers. Um, the best way to find practice is through the Queensland Study Hub. It is a Discord server created by a dude named Oliver. Really, really amazing. I will link it in the description. But basically, in that, there's like a help channel for every subject and people will post their questions in there. And what I would do is, because typically people would post the really hard questions, I would look at those, try to do them myself and really just expose myself to all of these different question types. And on that server, a lot of people share resources that they have been given. So it's a really, really good place to find resources. What did your average day look like in year 12? So in year 12, I wake up, um, I went to school pretty early um, just because my options were either get driven to school by mum or walk. And I hated walking, especially in extreme weather, either extreme heat or extreme cold. In Toowoomba here it is cold. So I often went early because my mum would drive me. I would try and hang out either in the locker room or in the library or the common room, wherever was open at that time. And mornings were pretty peaceful for me. Sometimes I would do errands like return a library book or I would, you know, do my flashcards or print assignments or see teachers, whatever. But a lot of the mornings I just sat there um, and then went to the library maybe 10 minutes before class started, sort of to like get ready for the day. But my mornings were pretty chill. Um, I would go to school and then I would come home straight away in the afternoon. I would chill um, until around four o'clock. I'd like I'd have some food, get ready. And then I would do maybe an hour, an hour and a half of some study. And then I would do you know, dinner, I would watch TV with my family, like have family time. And then after that, um, at night, I would study a little bit more. And the last thing I would do, because my sister would go to bed at eight o'clock and my mum would go into her room. So when it was quiet at eight o'clock, I would um, do my UCAP practice then. And then I would be packing up by nine or finishing off last minute things by nine. My cat has come back. I would be finishing off last minute things by nine o'clock and then I would be you know, chat to my mum and then probably be in bed by quarter past nine, nine thirty. So that is what my typical day looked like in year 12. Okay, when do you start studying for the external? So for me, studying for the externals is studying all year round. As soon as you 
get that worksheet, get that homework, do it. Make sure you understand what you learn in class. I caught COVID the first week of my externals and like the week before. So I lost a lot of study time, a lot of cramming time. And I had COVID during both papers of my specialist exam. And it was hard. I felt so sick. I was really down because I'd missed all this study time. It just was awful. But I got a 49 out of 50 on that specialist exam. And that's because even though I was sick as a dog and I had missed out on that precious study time leading up to the exam, I had done all of the work. I'd put in the work the coming year. I'd done all the work already. So it was all in there. So to start studying for the externals, it's a year long process. You start from the beginning of year 12. The other thing is expect year 11 content to be in your externals. It can be in there. 21, any regrets regret, regrets of year 12? Um, yeah, I wish I'd gone to um, um, this party my friends had invited me to the day after we graduated. I was so tired and I was so done. I was like, no, I'm not going. And I really wish I'd gone because, well, most, most of our grade was there and at least the people that I really did like were there. And now I went, and then I went overseas and they all moved to Brisbane or to other cities now. So that was my last opportunity to get to see everyone. And I really wished I had gone to that 18th birthday party. Um, how do you save time studying and not doing unnecessary tasks? Just put your phone away, put it in a different room, give it to your mum, tell her to put it in her pocket, just put your phone away. How different are maths methods and maths specialists? They are very, very different. Methods is a lot easier and methods is a lot more like pure maths, as in like, you learn how to derive, you learn how to integrate, you learn how to do statistics. Whereas specialists, there's a lot of like physics-y sort of maths problems or like coding. Like when you do matrices, you can like code with them. When you do, like there's a lot of physics sort of stuff in specialist. So that is probably the main difference. Um, methods is a lot more just like derive this, integrate this. Um, methods is a lot more basic and a lot more simple. Did you ever score any 100%? I scored a lot of 100% in my time. Every single student experiment I did, which ended up to be 7, 100%. Most things I did, I got 100% in. Um, there was this one time. So if you get a 15 out of 15, you own, on a maths exam, you only need to get 93% or above, but it still counts as a 15 out of 15. I got so many 15 out of 15s, but my one flex was in one of my specialist exams. I got a pure 60 out of 60. I did not lose a single mark, and I'm not gonna lie, I was very, very happy with that. But yeah, um, I did get a lot of 100% in my time. In year 12, there were only three assessment pieces I didn't get 100% on. I got a nine out of 10 on my physics data test, and a 19 out of 20 on my specialist, and no, a 19 out of 20 on my methods PSMT and an 18 out of 20 on my specialist PSMT. Every other assessment piece I did that wasn't an external, I got 100% in. Except for English, forget about English. What was your proudest achievement during year 11 and year 12? I did have a lot of achievements that I'm so proud of. I got ducks a couple of times, all of that. But my most proud thing ever was getting the Peter Doherty Award for Excellence in STEM. And I was so proud of it because it didn't come from school. It didn't come from people who knew me. It was based purely off my contribution to STEM in the community. And honestly, it was just really amazing because it was the first prestigious award I'd ever gotten. It was at the Brisbane Convention Centre and because I lived rurally, they set us up in a really nice hotel for a night. And honestly, I just had an amazing experience. I actually do have a vlog of that if you want to watch it. And I got this really cool big certificate in a frame. Honestly, getting the Peter Doherty Award was my proudest achievement, like, ever. So please watch that vlog if you're interested. And let me know if you ever want to apply for it. How to not lose motivation. For me, not losing motivation meant making sure that I um, knew what I wanted. I knew what medicine involved. I had gone to, like medicine tryout days and work experience and all that and basically I just had to keep reminding myself why I'm doing this and because I am so passionate about medicine and science and uni it was easy for me to keep going what to do when it seems like you are not getting you what what to do when it seems like no matter how hard you are you you try you aren't getting better in that situation it really seems that you need to look at what you're doing 
and stop doing that and try something completely different. If you are trying so hard and you're not getting any better, it means you need to change what you were doing. What do you do when you have gotten into an exam and you have forgotten everything? Um, this is something that works for both the UK and maths and science exams, all kind of exams. Do the easy questions first. They will boost your confidence. You will feel so much better. It will unlock that part of your brain that needs to be working. It's going to remind you of all of these things that you have forgotten and help you for the harder questions. Don't do the exam paper in order. Do the exam paper in which questions are easier first. So if you get into an exam and you feel you've forgotten everything, you haven't forgotten it, it's in here. Draw diagrams, do the easy questions first, get whatever you can on a piece of paper. Don't sit there doing nothing. Tips for staying calm during the year. Have something that you really do enjoy doing. So every night I would watch like a TV show with my family. So I think last year we watched like Superstore and My Kitchen Rules and all of that sort of stuff. And that's, I, I just, that's all I need. Like I loved that time every night with my family where I just sat and I didn't have work to do and I could while I watch TV, I could either just watch TV, I could play games on my phone, I could do like personal stuff, anything like that. It was just a really nice time. So to stay calm, I really just spent a lot of time with my family and talk to your teachers. Um, if you may have a good relationship with your teachers, like I always did, they basically tell you what you're going to get. Like your teacher will be like, you're going to be fine. Yeah. So stay calm, have a great relationship with your teachers and have something every day that makes you happy. Is biology a bad subject choice if you want to do medicine or get a high ATAR? Depends what you consider high. I got a 99.75 with biology. That is definitely a high ATAR, but if you want to get any higher, it's going to be really hard if you do biology as a subject. However, I loved bio. I was not going to give bio up for anything. So while yes, it bio does make it hard to get a perfect ATAR, you can still get a really high ATAR with it. And for medicine, personally I think biology is a great subject if you want to do medicine because in year 11 and year 12 biology there is quite an element in Queensland of human biology. Like in year 11 you do like the the kidney and like all of that sort of stuff, um, like respiratory system, all of that sort of stuff, like immune cells and stuff. In year 12 you do a lot of like DNA and like all that sort of stuff. So I do think biology is a great subject if you want to do medicine. My first subject, Introduction to Biomedical Sciences, which I start in a couple of weeks at uni, is basically just year 11 and year 12 biology crammed into one. So biology is a great subject for medicine, but not as great for a high ATAR, but if you love it, do it. Do you have to do STEM subjects to get into medicine? No, you don't. There's no prerequisites for most medicine courses. If anything, typically it would just be chemistry and a math subject. Other than that, there's not really any prerequisites. However, if you don't do STEM subjects because you're bad at them, then maybe medicine isn't the best choice for you. It's really something you need to consider there. What was my predicted ATAR? So my predicted ATAR was between, it was very vague, it was like 98.5 all the way to 99.95. So that was my predicted, 98.5 or above, but it was more predicted on the higher end of things. Um, what was your final subject score in year 11 compared to year 12? Um, that is actually an amazing question. I'm just trying to think about it now. I think I did a bit better in year 12. So I think I got like, I'm just thinking of my results. So I think I got, um, okay, actually here, I don't remember English. In methods, I got 99 in year 11 and 98 in year 12. In specialist, I got 98, nine. 99 in year 12 and not no specialist was 99 in year 11 and 98 no 97 in year 12 biology was 98 in year 11 and 99 in year 12 physics was 97 in year 11 and 98 in year 12 and chemistry was 98 in year 11 and 100 in year 12 I that's a real dodgy recollection. I'm not sure if that's accurate at all. 
yeah, I don't know how accurate that actually was. So, yeah, probably not the best question. What is the difference between your ATAR calculated prediction and your real ATAR? So if I go to the Queensland ATAR calculator and I put my scores in for 2022, it's a 99.95. If I put my scores in for 2023, it's a 99.8. But in 2023, my real ATAR was actually a 99.75. So there is a 0.05 difference in mine and the ATAR calculator predicted me to get higher than what I actually did. What ATAR did you think you would get and what ATAR did you want to get? I thought that I would get, oh, this is really hard. At the beginning of the year, I was like, I'll get above 99. And then I really, after externals, I lost all of my confidence. I was like wrecked, I was ruined, I felt so dumb. And I thought, I was just like, please let me get above 95. So that's what ended up happening. But I wanted 99 or above. And more specifically, I really wanted to challenge myself and get above 99.5. I was so lucky and I did manage to get that. How did you cope with the amount of stress put into ATAR? This is similar to staying calm. I, um, I didn't stay calm at times, but with the stress, I really made sure that I was doing things that I loved still, like watching My Kitchen Rules or Big Brother with my family. And I did have some, I was really looking forward to Christmas and like stuff like that got me through. Did you do volunteer work at school or outside of school during year 11 or 12? I did do volunteer work. I volunteered with the Toowoomba Regional Council at the Car Carnival of Flowers and I did a lot of in-school volunteering. So I was like a UQ Science Ambassador. I was on the Academic Committee, the Faith and Service Committee. I was a tip leader. I did was a tour ambassador for the school. I did a lot of like events at like open days and the fair. I participated quite a bit. And because of that, I actually did get the principal's award for service. Did you work a job during year 11 or year 12? So yes, I did. I've actually worked at a casual job since year nine. Um, in year nine and year 10, most of year 10, I worked at KFC and then term four of year 10 I got a job at Woolworths and I've worked at Woolworths ever since I worked all through year 11 and year 12 and I did take the external period off so I wasn't working during external exams or the weeks leading up to it but other than that I did work on the weekends at Woolworths so yeah I probably should have said that when I talked about my studying schedule um many of my weekends I did work a shift or two at Woolworths so that cut into my time quite a bit what is an efficient way to balance life in an outside of school? Again, making sure that you force yourself to take time off, get your parents to say, go do something fun, watch TV. Really get um, people involved in your life so it's not just you and having a really, really good calendar system. Do you think we should prepare a few years in advance, say in year nine or 10? I think year nine and 10 is a great opportunity to make sure you know how to study and you get those skills down pat because if you try and learn those in year 12 you are screwed so it's really important that you learn how to study early on what things should you do to get into medicine so there are three components to most medicine courses in um australia ucat atar interview prepare for ucat prepare for atar prepare for your interviews i am going to have a load of videos up on that i've got whole ucat playlists and all that so i can link that here but other things that you should do to prepare to get into medicine is that interviews do expect you to talk about experiences you have had. And I always recommend part-time casual job being the best because having a job gives you a certain maturity and a certain way of dealing with people that things like sport or music or orchestras don't give you. Having a job is that real world experience that medical interviewers are really looking for. So I would say to prepare for medicine, get a job, get volunteering. It's gonna give you the confidence you need to speak comfortably in interviews, in any part of your life. So for medicine, get a job. Is year 11 and 12 and ATAR as bad as everyone says? Everyone has a very different experience. However, most people I knew actually Despite the stresses of year 12 and year 11, there are so many fun things going on as you get older and your life changes a bit. You know, there's parties and boys and formal and all of that sort of stuff. Life does get a lot more fun. And I do know a lot of people actually thought year 11 and 12 were amongst the best years of their life. 
How do you give yourself more opportunities in your high school years to prepare for the future? Volunteer for things, sign up for things, put your name down. Even if you're not confident doing it, put your name down anyway. A lot of people feel like, you know, their people aren't going to want them there, anything like that. I'm telling you, it is the complete opposite. A lot of organisations that do volunteering and stuff like that really um, look like quite fondly onto school kids who are willing to put themselves out there. And you are respected quite a lot. And really get yourself a job. Getting a job, even if it's at Macca's or KFC, can really open up the world of things that you can do. So to give yourself more opportunities, just sign up and just give it a go. Because the more you meet people, the more you network, all of that, the more you get all of these opportunities just walking in the door. But yeah, um, I don't have any more questions to answer. Thank you so, so, so much for watching. I hope this was useful. Um, ask any questions that I missed out below. I can do as many of these videos as you like. I really hope that you guys did find some part of this useful, but that is my tips for getting a high ATAR and that is how I got a 99.75. Thank you so much for watching and please like and subscribe.